What is the worst permanent life decision that you've ever made? Bought a penis ring to have sex with my ex-GF. The first and only time I used it. I set the ring size way too small basically choked my penis from lack of circulating blood. Completed sex. But the next morning my penis was shriveled, like half its normal flaccid size, and looked like it was covered in really tiny veins everywhere, went to the ear, and it turns out, that I caused ischemia in parts of my penis, burst a few blood vessels, and basically destroyed my ability, to get an erection for the rest of my life, I'm only in my 20s, I'm so sorry, that you win this thread. Not mine, but my mom's trusting a sketchy dentist because he was in the neighborhood and took medicaid for every filling he gave us he drilled out entirely too much healthy tooth and gave us each one root canal in each of our mouths the tooth that had root canal treatment completely broke off to the gum and all the teeth that he filled ended up breaking he has since been put out of business and been charged with malpractice playing in a band without earplugs tinnitus is a bee i decided to try and be a Parker expert. My Chitai coordination didn't kill my motivation, until one evening, I was at a local park, and decided to do a massive wall jump, that failed epically. I fell on top of a jabbed surface, and tore my intestines. Due to this injury, I now have a permanent colostomy at the ripe age of 16. Mistakes man, they suck. Stretching my ears, one of them is stuck with a 10mm hole, in that I have to have a plug in permanently or else it looks like a cat anus. Tattoo with my wife's name, she got mine. 2. Married 6 years at the time, blissfully in love, lasted another 8. Now I just wanna chop my arm off, chop hers off. 2. Swap arms, problem solved, grammatical god. Missing the party that Bill Gates threw, when I was in college before Microsoft took off, because I got high, I was gonna hang with Bill Gates, but I got high, we cold bean best mates, but I got high, I don't work for Microsoft, and I know why, why man, because I got high, because I got high, because I got high. Rolling the dice with unprotected 6, did you get craps, wow that sounds like the worst sti ever. I have a large birthmark on one side of my face, and when I was around 8 years old, when my father was still alive, and we had a decent income, my mother informed me of a simple procedure, and asked if I wanted to have the birthmark removed, I said no, because it gave me character, as it turns out, that character is a socially awkward hermit who, and I've had a couple women tell me this, looks like a rapist, port wine birthmark, dude, yours doesn't look bad at all, if that procedure your mom informed you of is laser surgery, I'd have to say avoid it, it might not work, and could leave scarring, I'm going to guess you wear the hat because a, you like the hat, and b, it partially hides the birthmark or draws attention away from it, I think the hat's just hurting you in the conventional attractiveness department it hides a good portion of your face, it looks like you're trying to hide in your clothes like a turtle, and to some people, that is going to read as sketchy, seriously, you look fine, the birthmark looks fine, rocket. Going to med school, because it was the next logical step, I didn't take it seriously, and now I'm dollar sign 300 plus k in debt, waiting tables, horribly overeducated and underskilled slash licensed for everything, living with my parents, and trying to figure out what's next. I tried to climb the highest mountain in my country, my father took me, and my brother there with some friends. The problem is, that I have sickle cell anemia, and due to the low oxygen I just couldn't go further, but I did anyway. Bad idea, my spleen and appendix almost burst, and I had to wait for 24 hours, in agonizing pain before a helicopter rescued my A. Had to get my spleen and appendix removed, and now I can't do any hard exercise, ever, TL. Doctor tried to climb the highest mountain in my country, lost two organs, look on the bright side at least you're immune to malaria, luckily those are about the two least important organs in the body, and there lies the gallbladder, not even special enough to rupture, I wouldn't be so quick to put down the spleen, the fact that it's not necessary for life doesn't mean, that it doesn't do anything important. Marrying a Scottish stripper, I'm interested to know, why you used quotes there, she was here illegally, in a nutshell, we actually did look into getting her citizenship and status depending, and then eventually legal, green card and all, 
she just couldn't be bothered with it in the end I think. It's not like I was making enough money to pay the lawyer to begin the process. I used quotes because I've spoken to at least three different lawyers about addressing the need for a divorce and have easily received three different explanations as to whether I am or I am not actually married. What's her stage name? Irene Brew. I grew up poor, as in family, had no car or indoor plumbing for many years, and lived mostly off potatoes and eggs we raised in the backyard. As a teen I had one pair of shoes and two pairs of blue jeans, to last an entire school year, which were pretty worn out, and patched after a few months. I envied my friends who were better off, and became a workaholic that held down three jobs at a time for most of my 20s and 30s. I bought my first apartment building at age 24, while I myself was living in a ratty 1972 mobile home on rented ground in a sheep farm pasture. I went to college part time for years as time permitted, paying cash. I'm not wealthy, but have done okay for myself, have a nice house and enough to live comfortably, and finally got married at age 50. If I had it to do over again, I would have worked less and partied more when I was younger and made more time for a social life. I regret never taking enough time to search for and find the right one when I was young enough to have kids and a family, instead settling for comfortable relationships with a few women over the years who showed any interest in me and raising their kids instead. I would have spent more time traveling the world, getting a better education, explored art more, gone to concerts, drank more beer, owned more animals, sat around more bonfires, learned to play an instrument, learned to fly, owned more race cars, volunteered at more charities, gone to more beaches, planted more gardens, and formed more deep friendships with a large, diverse and eclectic group of people. These things are more important than having money in the bank or a nice house. I think I can drift on this gravel road. I think I can make a hard turn on this road, in the rain, on a motorcycle. The entirety of my experience in either drifting or turning hard comes from the Pixar classic cars. I've seen it around 30 times, so I'm pretty sure I'm an expert when it comes to automotive maneuvers. My dad called me and told me he was dying. He was in hospital with cancer. I asked the nurse if he was, and she said no. Anyway I tried to get to see him, but my brother had my car and I couldn't get anyone to take me, and he died late that night, alone, if I knew. Obviously I would have bust, walked, hitchhiked or crawled to that hospital, but I didn't, and 14 years later I still can't forgive myself and it haunts me every day. After reading the question I guess this doesn't really belong here, but oh well I typed it and it's staying. I don't know if this will help. Your dad is gone now, but you're still here. That mistake only exists in your mind and memory now, with no impact on the world or evidence that it's occurred except for the power you give it. I'm sure your dad would want you to be happy and to forgive yourself. At least he had someone to call, and that person answered the phone. You tried life put stupid barriers in your way, so you didn't make it, but your father had someone who wanted to be there for him. Not wearing my retainer, you can always get braces again, says the orthodontist. I decided to break up a fight, it was a success at first, but then some guy came from behind and tackled me. I was stronger than him and gave a few good ones, but he was obviously a trained fighter. He put my leg in some type of J.I. Jitsu hold and tore my ACL. I was an uninsured student at the time. Ten years later, I still cannot play any sports and I have to be extremely cautious in the snow. Happened to my buddy too. Tried to stop a fight. Guy who he pulled off put him in an arm lock and dislocated his elbow. Took him six months to recover, but thankfully he has all his mobility back. I slipped and fell in some snow that winter, and when I got back up I had full mobility again. Drive said I had torn some cartilage during the original injury, and when I slipped the cartilage went back into place. I just can't pivot abruptly, or my knee spaghettis. Man that's a damned if you do. Damned if you don't right there. Sorry that happened to you. Thanks. I don't dwell on it. Sh happens. I have a friend who has a tendency to white knight in bar fights. No matter how much I explain to let it be he doesn't understand the risk he's taking. I normally have an non-intervention policy, but a good friend was in the fight, and he was beating the other guys a. When he started slamming the guy's head into the sidewalk, it was time to stop the fight. 
I stepped in numerous times. When I see someone being attacked by numerous people or someone is being beaten so badly I think they may be seriously hurt. I live in Boston and there are a lot of hothead locals and a lot of drunk college kids. I boxed for many years and did some MMA training so I can hold my own. I only do it because I've been jumped by a group of people several times. Twice was beaten badly but once someone I didn't know stepped in and took some lumps helping me. These guys would have hugged me pretty badly if he hadn't stepped in. Typically it's enough to just grab someone or two and pull them off to protect the person. But sometimes it comes to actually having to fight. I just don't want to see someone unfairly beat more seriously injured. I didn't take brushing or flossing seriously and now a bunch of my teeth are in pretty bad shape. You don't need to floss all of your teeth. Just the ones you want to keep. Dr. Carol Krasolnicki. I stopped wearing my retainer a few months ago. And I'm slowly watching my future dental bills tell me to go f myself. Your comment made me get up and put in my retainer after 2 months or not wearing it. It happened to me. My teeth shifted so much I couldn't wear the retainer. It's been 8 plus years and I really can't tell that they have shifted much at all. As a dentist, get your schfix now. Those $100 fillings turn into 2000 root canal and crown very quickly. Just had my first root canal yesterday. I'm here to upvote this. I didn't have a cur in the world until one day I bit down and experienced the worst pain ever. Years of neglect will now cost me months of work slash money. Luckily, I have a fantastic dentist and the root canal was completely painless point. But still something I prefer not to do again. When you're young, you think you're invincible. I'm invincible. It's the motto of our youth. We'll just wait and see. I'm glad I'm not the only one I wish I could take it all back. I just got up to brush my teeth. Every teenager should be made to read through this thread in its entirety. Smoking. I have done irreversible damage to my body. For no reason other than to get a nicotine fix for a problem I created for myself. God I was stupid. I quit two years ago. And I still think I want to smoke on a weekly basis. But I know better. Keep it up. You can do it. Volunteering to go to war. I didn't even have to go. Could have finished my contract out. And never have went. I feel like it cost me my sanity and happiness most of the time. Definitely took more out of me than I ever expected it to. Decided to not socialize when I was younger. Didn't go to a four year college. And I work full time. Now I have no life. 29 no friends. And I work at Walmart. Shoot me PLS. Hey you're me. Except you're employed. Sigh. It was a very gradual shift over the course of a year from if I eat a little less and exercise more to if I eat absolutely nothing and exercise for 4 to 5 hours a day. That did it to me. The entire time I felt like I was making a conscious, independent choice as I slipped further and further into a mental illness that kills 20% of its sufferers. Now I have a serious heart problem, osteopenia, and people still do not think I'm sick, just in control. I would have less health problems if I were overweight. My doctors had to let me go once I was a healthy weight, but that didn't help my mental health at all. Every day I struggle with putting the food I need to live into my body. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. Lying through my teeth. I'm okay to my high school counselor when she asked me how I was doing. Four years of severe depression and many failed college classes later. So many doors in life are closed to me forever. If you're a young adult reading this, please get the help you need, if you need it, today. Tattoos. I love them. But if I could go back, I wouldn't get them. Just out of curiosity. Why the change of heart? Career choice. Fortunately, it's nothing a long sleeve shirt doesn't cover. But still, I just wish it was more hidden. I have ones on my chest and side that I don't worry about at all. Just one on my forearm and one on my bicep. Cold picked a better place for them. To not be more there for my grandparents before they passed. I know what you mean. Didn't do much about it before point but now. I think about my grandpa all the time. With some things you just don't get a second chance. When I was 20 or so I was poor. My family was poor and things got really bad that year. I decided I could make some quick money flipping stolen items. Buy cheap. Sell for a profit. I was an idiot and got busted. I got a felony for it and 7 years of probation. Now I'm 28. 
can't get a refine job anywhere, and life is nearly pointless at this juncture. I've been on the good side of the law, since that all went down, and with each month that passes where I wonder, if I'll eat tomorrow, or have a roof over my head I think more and more I could solve this, by getting back into crime, it's a vicious cycle, and I'd rather be shot in the mouth than go through all of it again. I have no clue how I'll ever get my fine life back on track. TL. Doctor don't commit crimes. When you're desperate, you'll do something stupid and f your life up forever. And don't ever think that anyone will get it or give two fs about you. Because they won't. The world will condemn you, shun you, and then treat you like a worthless lazy C. Because no one will fine hire you. Yay for life. Slash s. I turned down my dream job because of location. Then, I ended up getting another job elsewhere that was the right location and a high salary, and those were the worst 5 years of my life. Care to elaborate? Prostitution point or a government official? Breaking up with that awesome girl in college, because I wasn't ready to settle down. Been trying to find a girl that awesome ever since, or remotely close. You shouldn't compare everyone to her, I do the same thing, but you'll always have a bar set for a bunch of trays no one else will have. And you could very much meet someone else who will suit your needs, if you just let it go, and find someone awesome. Not just as awesome, but awesome as well. I messed up my first semester of college pretty badly. I wasn't used to the freedom of having the option, to show up to class. I ended up getting kicked out, and I think the reason, that this is the worst permanent life decision I've made, is because I know how much I disappointed some of my family members, especially my dad. I'm going to a community college now, and I told my dad my grades and GPA, and he did say he was proud of me, which was good. I got married, and we got matching tattoos instead of wedding rings, because tattoos are permanent like marriage, right, my husband is leaving me, thank you awesome stranger for the gold. Maybe not 100% permanent, but I'm a recent college grad with a degree in film, and while film is my passion I hate myself every day for being stupid enough to major in film, UHH. Hey the film industry am I right guys? Tramp. Stamp. Saying no when I was offered treatment for my mental illnesses. Now I'm barely functional, and have no health insurance slash. Screwing around in high school, and not going to college. I'm not saying college is necessary for everyone, but I think I would be in a much better place overall, if I had gone. I have a decent corporate job, that I'm very good at. I've been employed by the same company for 10 years. My life is not horrible, but the ceiling is getting so low, that I have to crouch in my cubicle. I've seen enough advice animal memes on the front page to know that the high school kids are out for summer. If you are reading this, please take my genuine advice. Just tough it out, do well in school, and get a scholarship. Your schoolwork should really be your main focus in life. It will suck. You may not get to go do the things your friends are doing. I know this. I chose to have fun, and now I don't have much fun anymore. I have close friends that are now fresh new lawyers, paramedics on their way to becoming doctors, a Wall Street broker and even an astrophysicist, and I'm already 10 years into a middling career that can't ever really make me happy. I'm not saying my life is over and this is it for me. I can go to college in my spare time. My employer will even help pay for it. I'm pretty good at taking pictures. I can see a spark there. Maybe something will come of that as well. What I'm saying is I would have much preferred, in retrospect, if I had just buckled down and worked hard and gone to college right after high school when learning was still fresh and I still remembered a bit about higher level algebra. The ability to learn at the rate you currently did goes away. You sit while you have it. Now, I'll have to relearn a lot of do schoolwork around a full time job. TL. Doctor, St. Dumas High School football rules. Move to France, not a permanent decision, but within a year, I knew I would never like it. It's been 6 years of pure hell, hate the country, hate the culture, just depressed chronically until my BF, and I made the decision, to move back to Canada last year. We're leaving tomorrow morning at 8am, on a direct flight to Montreal, yeah home. After reading some of these, I don't feel like such a piece of sh for making the decisions I've made thus far. Not saying any of you are pieces of sh for the decisions you've made, but it relieves me to know that I'm not alone in my bad decision marking. Now, when I walk through the neighborhoods at night to relieve some stress, 
all the fancy houses I pass by won't be so daunting anymore. Because now I know there are people in those seemingly good lives who have made some wrong turns or are unhappy where they're at. Thanks, guys. Too many to count. Doing drugs. Marrying my ex-wife. Moving to Vegas. Drinking again. Jesus Christ what a train wreck my life has been. Not breaking up with my ex-wife while we were in college. One night we were doing laundry and we were right on the verge of breaking up. We almost broke up. But I backed down. We ended up getting married and had a couple of kids. My life is very effed up because of her now 15 years down the road point. But I have two wonderful kids from the relationship that would not exist if we had broken up that one night. Funny how so much of my life seems to pivot around that one night and that one decision. Without making the decision I made I would not have my kids. But my life would not be F addition. I think about that night a lot. Reminds me of something my dad said after my team had lost a game. Something that has always stuck with me. Everyone always focuses on that last shot before the buzzer. That one game changing moment. That could have made a difference. In reality, there are an infinite number of moments that affect the outcome. An infinite number of chances to change how things eventually turned out. Thinking about that moment, dwelling on it, wondering about how it all could have gone differently isn't productive. You have to stand back and look at the whole in order to understand what happened in a context that you can draw something meaningful from. Your life could still be effed and you wouldn't have your kids. Dude you need to not dwell so much. It was only one night. You could have broken up any night. So you're saying he had several opportunities to not mess up his life and he missed them all. Walking up the wrong side of the stairs as a kid, I fell and got a horrible scar on my face. Wrong side. Stairs like this. I was trying to walk up the side of the stairs that stick out past the handrail. Buying that World of Warcraft subscription and game in 2004. You ever just spend hours jumping around Stormwind when you're bored? IDK how people can jump in Stormwind. Ironforge has perfectly spaced squares for jumping. Why would anyone choose to jump in Stormwind? When Ironforge is clearly made for jumping mindlessly. PhD. There's no going back once you have that level of loan debt. Getting married twice. The first one I was young and dumb. The second one she was young I was still dumb. There will be no third marriage in my future. I'm tired of losing three quarters of my stuff. Judge, they can keep all their stuff and you give them half of your stuff. Oh and you get to pay all the bills. Me. I don't need a condom. I'll just pull out. 19 years old me. Despite MTV's efforts to glamorize teenage parents, it really sucks. It's hard trying to raise someone when you yourself don't even have direction in your life. You're already poor. Kids are expensive. And you alienate yourself from your friends because number 19-21 year old really wants to hang out with you and your kid on a Friday night. You drop out of school because you can't handle working 40 hours a week. Being a parent and trying to be a full-time student or even a part-time student. All this being said, I love my son to death and he is probably the best thing that happened to me. Without him I truly believe I would have drank or partied myself into a really bad place. Took me a lot longer to get back on my feet. But 12 plus years later I'm finally back in school and really happy with my life. Going to University of Toronto for 2 years. I wasted 2 years of my life. $16,000 and now. I don't even want to put it on my resume. Because I'd have to explain to the interviewer why I didn't finish. Damn it I knew the first semester I was there. That I wasn't smart enough to graduate. I studied 5 to 8 hours per day. And got the same grades as someone who studied 5 to 8 hours a month. Choosing a degree for the money. Not for what I'm interested in. Now I'm stuck with a major. That I don't even like. I did the exact opposite. Now I have the stress of a bunch of debt and a job over my head all day. I say you chose the lesser of two evils. Hey. At least you'll have job options. I was interested in psychology. And I'm starting a job as a cashier soon. I'm already considering going back. And learning how to program. So I can find a job. That makes money. Rocking a backwards upside down visor in middle school. Oh you're that guy. I bet his name is Brad.